In this episode of the RV Small Talk podcast, uh, we're going to check out uh, a fantastic way to scope out sites. Maybe you're in the in the hunt for a place to visit or you're in route or, or something like that. Always. And, and we've always had this problem of always. scoping out sites, whether it be the trailer fit or is there a picnic table or is there a view? Or... Wouldn't you always want to know why that one weird space isn't rented? Sure. I mean, I always think, all right, there's one left. Why? Yeah, there's there, got to be. You reason. never know. So we're going to talk to Mark today and tell you about a new app. Uh, maybe not brand new, but it's been out there and it is a great way to see what it is you're booking. That's right. So we're going to have Mark Kep, founder and CEO of CampgroundViews.com on today. And we're going to dig into just a little bit of the backstory on this fantastic tool, but also um, how it might play into your plans right now. But before that... Before that, welcome to the RV Small Talk podcast, where we talk about lightweight trailers, truck campers, and people, places, and ventures that go right along with them. We are your hosts from Princess Craft RV. I'm Clint. I'm PJ. And I think I got poison ivy. I'm pretty certain you have poison ivy. You want to touch me? No. Stay away. <laughs> Stay way over right there. So at any rate, if you are just joining us on the podcast, you can check out show notes for all our past episodes and future episodes at rvsmalltalk.com. We're on social media. Just look us up, RV Small Talk Podcast. We're also on YouTube. You know what else they could do? I don't know. What else could they do? They could like rate and review us on Apple Podcast, and that would be so helpful. Turns out that's 100% correct. I know. I say smart smart. things sometimes. Sometimes. So with that, let's. Speaking of smart. Huh? Uh, huh? Do it. Do it. Do you like that segue? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, that was it. That was it? Okay. That's all she got? (laughs) Everybody, I would like to welcome to this episode, Mark Kep. And Mark, am I saying your last name correctly? Yeah, you nailed it. Thank you. Okay. All right. Wow. I was staring at it going. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> All it right. has too many vowels. Well, you are the founder, the 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 thought process, the the originator, the man, the, man. the myth, there might we go. Even the legend. The, he but, might even be I'm the programmer. We don't know. This, so. Behind campgroundviews.com. So we got to know, who are you? What's your camping history? How'd you get into this? And then we'll take it deeper into what you've developed. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on and nice to meet everybody. Yeah, my name is Mark Kep. Um, the company's campgroundviews.com and it was all built out of the same pain that every single camper faces the second they leave to go on a camping trip, which is where in the heck am I going? And uh, back in, in 2009, my wife and I sold everything we own. We bought a fifth wheel and originally started out to do a year, year and a half, just, you know, traveling the country. And that ended up turning into 12 years as full-time RVers. Uh, visited over 5,000 campgrounds and RV parks and lived in all these amazing spots. And um, that's what led us to what we've created here now. So it came from you having the same struggle that everybody else does. You just did yep. something about it. I exactly. Love that. You know, all the all the solutions that are out there and all the apps that people have on their phone, they're all um, they're all based upon a simple in the tech jargon is called UCG user or UGC user generated content. So they rely upon users to write reviews and mm-hmm. send photos in. It only works for popular places. It doesn't work for campgrounds that are out of the way. And so we have a different model. Let's go out and actually actively capture campgrounds and share that information with people. Instead of sending people to the same four campgrounds in Yosemite Valley floor, why not tell them about the other 95 campgrounds within 50 mile radius of Yosemite so they can go have a more interesting and special experience with their campers. 95 campgrounds. I can tell you there are people out there who do extensive research my adorable husband would be one of them and he would know all 95, but most people don't want to spend the day figuring out where they want to stay. Um, so this app would help them to narrow it down or I mean, I don't know. 95 is a lot. Anybody who's ever done any research for a campground knows that, um, actually let me pause real fast. Um, I just got an error on my machine here. It says quota exceeded error. You've run out of free disk space to save local backup. Oh, okay. So, so that means that your computer isn't is no longer recording, but it is backing up online. Okay. So it just means it just means that you don't. It's not going to keep on recording to your machine. You are certain because Mark 
probably won't want to do this again once, oh, he's once gonna, we've nabbed him once. He's going to have so much fun. He's actually going to come <laughs> visit us in person. He just okay. doesn't know it He's probably going to build us a statue or something. I mean, Maybe. Sure. In one of those 95 campgrounds. But I will say I will say this. Uh, th- we've run into this issue before, and I've had good results pulling okay. off of the server. Okay. All right. If then Clint's I'll take confident, it up, we'll go with it. We're answering that question, which is one of the things that people are looking for a campground, they all go to Google. Everybody goes in Google Earth, Google Street View, and you, you grab right. that little guy down in the corner, the little Street View guy, and you drag him, and the, all the roads light up except for the campground. You try to drop him in the campground, and he won't go in the damn campground. <laughs> right. That's what, that's what we built is we built Google Street View for campgrounds. You can actually go into that campground. So it's very much like Google Street View. For campgrounds, we utilize video instead of photos. So there's a bit of a difference. You hit play and it's like GoPro style tour. You're actually cruising right. down the campground roads. And then in 360, you can grab that screen as it's moving and look around and look over at the sites. And then what makes it really cool is that we augment that experience, meaning we put information over those sites. So when you're looking at a site, you'll see this little marker pop up. You click on that marker, it'll tell you exactly what site you're looking at, what the size of it is, and it'll be a link that if you click, it'll take you right into the booking engine to book that site if it's available. So will it tell will it tell you straight from that street view if it's available or not, or you have to click on the link? Mm-hmm. In some of the campgrounds, yes. So all of the recreation.gov properties, we have a direct integration with their reservation engine. And you will you can actually set your dates in a little calendar. And those icons will change from green to red, depending upon their availability. So if Whoa. you put the dates you're going to be in there, those icons will be green. And so then there's an overhead map that you can drop down that shows you, you know, as if you're looking down at it from like a satellite view. Mm-hmm. And you'll see all the icons change red to green. And then you can click on the green ones and say, okay, that one works or this one doesn't. Um, we just had some users here recently send us some reviews and I mean, it's exactly what we wanted, it, it, which is cool. You know, we've been building this for a while, but we're starting to get that critical mass of, of footage where it's useful to a lot of people. And the gentleman responded and said, I already booked my vacation there. I just heard about you guys. So I tried it out and it found out, I found out that the site I booked, I could not have opened my slides in. I wouldn't have been able to open my slides because there's trees. So I used your tour, found a different site, canceled that reservation and moved over to the other site. You basically save my trip to this campground. So, you know, it's that, that's that same po- pain point all campers have. The problem in the industry is all of the reservation engines are basically better versions of hotel reservation systems. With hotels, everybody can fit in the same room. We're all going to fit in the same room. We're all, you know, we don't right. need to worry about trees and spaces and backing in. RVs are all uniquely different and it really relies upon a visual experience. And I can tell you a site's 20 by 30. But you know, sometimes the parking pad's 30 feet, but you can hang your tail end off the back right. there another 10 feet only if you could see that site. And so that's what we're providing is that visual experience. Right. So what did this look like in the early days? You Were you, I mean, obviously you found these pain points by doing it, but when you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to address this pain point by traveling to campsites, getting video. What did it look like? So the original idea was the same idea any sort of entrepreneur has, which is, oh, that would be easy. And the, and the simple easy <laughs> was is that we were, we were using all of those reservation in, or all those um, search engines that everybody is aware of to find campgrounds. And we would go, oh, this is a five-star park. Let's show up there. All the reviews are great. And then as we started traveling, we found out that those reviews are kind of full of crap. Like It was like you're showing up at these places and it's not five stars. Or there's a campground right next door that's not reviewed that was nicer or as nice and maybe even cheaper. And I was like, this is, I'm done with this. And so that was the original concept was to start building this. And it was just a hobby, just a hobby. And so original concept, if you go back in time, back in 2012, 2011, the iPhone had just come out. So we're going back in time. People were just getting, I mean, I had a flip phone at the time. So you're talking old school stuff. And the whole idea was, is people would send us pictures and video, and then we could put that, um, online. And so we started out with YouTube videos. We had several thousand YouTube videos on our YouTube channel and it just slowly built up from there. I scrolled for 15 minutes this morning down to the earliest videos. (laughs) (laughs) This is extensive. Yep. And so that was the original concept. So we're putting these things on YouTube. If you go back about four or five years ago, you'll see that there's some 360 videos in there. So that was when the consumer grade 360 video cameras came out and we started playing with that technology. In fact, we purchased the very first consumer grade 
360 camera and it was actually a 180 camera. So it was just a fisheye lens that faced up. Right. And we started playing with it at that time. And we ended up filming roughly 350 campgrounds with this. And when I say we, it was literally we, my wife and I, we go to a campground, cruise around, film it, you know, we're just playing with this technology. And so we started getting consumer feedback and people were like, this is cool, but I, you're going too fast. It's shaky. I don't know what site I'm looking at. It's, it's somewhat useful. Right. And so that's where the idea behind our technology came. And at that point it was like, well, this is pretty big. What, what we're talking about building here has never been done before. So the platform we built is proprietary. We created it. It didn't exist. We didn't license it. It's not off the shelf. So we actually had to build that. And all of that kind of culminated in the middle of COVID um, was when we launched this. We launched this technology in June of 2020, right in the middle of COVID. And at that time, we were, you know, I'm not rich, you know, we we're running our own business. And so mm-hmm. we were financing everything, you know, just every, every dollar we made went back into the business and just kept building it up that way. And so come COVID hits and the world's coming to an end and we're just like, yeah, screw it. Let's just keep going and build the same one. <laughs> right, right, <yeah. laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yeah. And so, so we you- launched it in June of 2020 with 143 campgrounds. Um, and as of this recording right now, I think we just passed 1,000 350 campgrounds with these campground virtual wow that's incredible that's a lot of tires that is (laughs) incredible well do you guys have a background in building uh like websites or operations like this i don't even know what to call it techie apps that do things that's the business. So what allowed us, you know, big question is how did you go full time in 2009? Like did you win the lottery or something? No. Um, I ran a digital marketing business. So at that time I was, or we were already digital. I didn't, I didn't meet with customers face to face. I was working virtually already. So it allowed us to start traveling anyways. And so my background was building websites, handling digital marketing. I have an MBA from Pepperdine. I like starting businesses. So like we, we kind of had the skill set already to start a business. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what kind of led us to this. Um, and originally campground views was really just a hobby. I mean, honestly, it was a hobby, but then as we started seeing the numbers of people that we were impacting and also from our own experience traveling, like, why, why are we doing this in the first place? Mm -hmm. The whole reason we're doing this is the world's gone freaking mad. And one of the last best ways to kind of reconnect with ourselves or friends or family in nature is to go camping. And so we just simply want to get more people out camping. And so we feel that the biggest gap between somebody deciding, yeah, I want to go camping and actually doing it is that information of gap of how do you do it? Where do I go? Right. And where am I going to stay? So we feel we can make the most positive impact by helping people more easily find places to stay. And so that's our focus and that's what we're doing. Right, right. And I find that there's so many people who are so far removed from it. Maybe they they just spend their entire day in day out existence in the cities and whatnot that they're removed from the experience of dealing with even state park systems or national park systems or local county parks that is actually uh, a psychological barrier to even start i mean we all know how to google but there's something different when navigating all the various campsite websites and things particularly county parks that that can be an awful experience (laughs) as as we talk to people one of the things that we've uncovered here is that uh buying a camper which is the realm that princess craft rv is in the fear of the unknown is overwhelming for some people and then you have to figure out where in the world to take it so then there's the fear of where am i going what's it like Is it going to be, you know, right next to all these people? I don't know, kind of worried because I don't I don't know where I'm going or exactly Mm -hmm. what I'm doing. I would think something like this would calm people down to be able to say, you're going right here. Here's what it looks like. You're good. I mean, I don't know the anxiety of the unknown. It's so one of the biggest you, you've heard this recently is, you know, there's there's some people that argue that um, the outdoors is inaccessible and it's it's unequitable and all that that stuff. But the reality is, is the problem with going outdoors is a lack of it, it's almost like hunting, right? You, you don't just decide to go hunting one day, buy a gun and go shoot an elk like you, that doesn't happen. Like you need somebody to guide you through it. Right. Same thing with camping. Like you don't just decide one day to buy a camper and go during COVID. A lot of people did that. Hell, we're buying a camper. Let's go. You know, and there was mm-hmm. all those those nightmare stories about that. But it's actually a decision process. I, I believe that the average decision making process from let's buy an RV to actually buying an RV is something like a year and a half from that decision to actually getting it. Mm-hmm. And then once you get to that hurdle, the next question is, OK, now what? Where do we go? Right. right? And so that's what the, the gap we're filming, filling. The problem is, is once you say, where do I go? You go to Google, you 
you go to Instagram, you go to Facebook and people only know what they know. So they know the popular destinations and they'll say, Oh, go to, go to fishing bridge RV park in Yellowstone national park. And then you'll, you'll try to go and you'll try to book and you'll find out it's sold out the entire month of July and August. Mm -hmm. And then you get frustrated and you just don't do it. And then once you don't do it, that RV sits in storage or it sits in your yard and it just, depreciates and you don't use it Mm -hmm. in the end using that rv just going out for two trips a year you're going to have a happier healthier life Mm -hmm. you're going to have a more more and better understanding respect of our country and the places and the people that are across our country it's just one of those good things and so we believe and and our data showing this from people that are using these virtual tours is by giving them really on the ground good information about campgrounds we help them say yes, not only them say yes, the decision maker, but also all the other people that are going to be drug along on that adventure, allowing them to say, hey, here's where we're going. That's huge, right? It's one thing for me to say, hey, we're going. It's another thing for my wife to say, all right, I'm coming along with you right. and it's going to be fun. And so by providing this visual ex- experience and that information that we're providing, that's really the gap that we're hoping to fill. Mm. Uh, well, I, so nice to hear you on that soapbox because that's what we preach every day. Get out there. You'll be happier. You'll be healthier. We have to remind each other, and we're right in the middle of it every single day. Hey, you need to go camping. You know, it's kind of like the Snickers commercial. Uh, you need to, like, get away and disconnect. And I, I don't know. I think that's absolutely true. And anything that removes a barrier or a fear, gosh, it's amazing. It's awesome. Mark, I want to know what your dream campsite is or when you're looking for a campsite what are the things that you look for or avoid that's a good question yeah so the the answer is it it varies it depends upon your habits so if i I answer broad if i answer for myself it's different today than it was when we were full-time rvers so i'm currently in a house we bought a house up in wyoming Um, we have a third child that's gonna be due in october so congratulations he's growing so our our life has changed right so Mm -hmm. we originally started as full-time rvers and we had two children on the road and then it just got complex and so we bought a Mm -hmm. home so when we were full-time RVing, our last RV was a 44-foot fifth wheel. It was a triple axle. It was 500 square feet inside. It was huge, right? So we we had very specific things that we we're looking for. We wanted full hookups. We needed good internet connection because we were working from the road. So we were very specific about what we were looking for in that regard. And that was because our use of the RV was different. It was our home that we were traveling in. Now we've got a 21 foot little hybrid travel trailer that we tow around. It's an old 1999 Prowler that I don't give a crap what happens to it. So (laughs) I'll drag it anywhere and I don't care where it goes. It'll fit. I'll, I'll make it fit. Right. So the cool thing about that is that our camping experience has changed. So now what we're looking for is we're actually looking to go camping. Previously, when we were living in an RV, we were looking to go stay somewhere for a bit. Now we're looking to go adventure and travel. So, I guess that's kind of a roundabout way is, is that's the problem with camping is the answer varies based upon what your needs are. So what I advise people to do is really, and and we did this, we did this purposely when we went full time. And we also did it when we bought this travel trailer, we sat down and we asked ourselves and we, it was around dinner. We said, Hey, we're looking at buying an RV when we're doing full time. And then again, when we bought this one and here's what we want to do with it, you know, when we're full time, we want to be able to have plenty of room. We want to be able to do our own laundry. We, you know, we want to feel like we have the comforts of home, no matter where we're at. So we had that list and from that list and that determined what we're looking for. Same thing with the travel trailer. Now, what are we using it for? We're using it to travel to trade shows and go adventuring in the mountains. So here's what we're looking for um, along those journeys. Some of the big, more universal questions that can be applicable to anybody is understand how tall you are, how big you are, and how heavy you are. Yes. I mean, a lot, and the heavy ones, a lot of people miss out on that. They think, well, I'm just towing a trailer behind my truck. Well, yeah, your trailer weight, your truck weighs 6,000 pounds. Your trailer weighs three, 4,000 pounds. You now weigh 10,000 pounds. You can't just go down some muddy road weighing 10,000 pounds. You're going to get stuck, right? So you have to think about what those variables are with your equipment that you're taking with you. And then also how how much you want to beat it up. Do you want to take it down a rough dirt road or do you want paved roads and what do you want those sites to be? Sure. The other thing, if you're, you know, some people are traveling with their family members. So do you want to go somewhere where there's a pool? Do you want to go somewhere where there's a water park, right? All, all those type of questions come into play. Um, we help campgrounds and RV parks market themselves. So that's actually one of our ways of making money and building this business is we serve RV parks and campgrounds, and we're basically their marketers to help them market their location. So that's actually one of my questions. Go ahead and continue, but I'm going to come back to that. 
Okay. Yeah. And so one of the things that I know from helping campgrounds and RV parks is that I know what 95% of consumers look for when they go to a website. The first question they have on their mind is, does this place look like a place that I can stay at? Right? So is it, is it intriguing enough for me to look into deeper? So that's the first question. If the answer is yes, the very next thing they look at is how much does it cost? What are the rates here? Is this in my budget? And then if it's in that budget, the third question is what features and amenities are there in addition to it's a place that looks cool. It's in my budget. Now, what more is there to do? And then the last question is where do I book? So it's really a simple journey um, to making that decision. The hard part is, and you alluded to like county parks. The hard part is, is that half of the campgrounds in the United States are run by public agencies. So Mm -hmm. federal parks, state parks, county parks, city parks, they run half of the campgrounds. The other half are run by private entities. The difference being is the private entities are generally looking to make a profit, meaning that they're improving their facilities, improving their amenities, managing their prices. So let's say we know uh, we know someone with private campgrounds, because like you said, 50 percent out there are private campgrounds are looking to, to bring people in. That's that's what they do. How do how does a private campground owner get connected with what you're doing? Yeah, the simplest way is uh, campgroundviews.com forward slash OMG, like, oh my God. That has all the information. <laughs> well, that's it has creative. All the information they need. What, it, the reason we have that is so as we rolled this out, we started testing with campgrounds, and these were campgrounds that were collecting the data. So when they have one of our virtual tours on their website, it's actually the numbers are so crazy, they don't believe us when we tell them because that 244% increase in online bookings. drop in inbound calls, doubling the average length of stays. Wow. I mean, just unheard of numbers for what happens when these virtual tours are on our website. But being campers, you you intrinsically know why. If I as a camper, because any camper out there has gone through the experience of trying to find a campground. The websites suck. The information's poor. But all of a sudden, you land on a website that has a full virtual tour that lets you drive through the campground and see the sites. Well, I don't need to call and ask them any questions because I can see that I can fit. The sites are pretty big and it links me into the booking engine so I can see I can fit and I can book. Well, I don't need to call. I'm going to make an online reservation. And when I'm planning my journey, hey, honey, let's stay there an extra day or two since we know what we're getting into and we'll just make that our longer stay. That's what happens. And so for the private parks, it's actually kind of the problem with private parks is that they don't believe me when I say those numbers just because I mean, who's going to believe you? Right, like you're right. I wouldn't believe you when you say stuff like that. Ain't making it up. It's legit numbers. And so um, campgroundviews.com forward slash OMG. We've got a cool partnership with um, RV Share. They uh-huh. actually are helping to fund these. So a private park can actually get a credit towards the virtual tour on behalf of RV Share because RV Share, you know, they're hitting people who are just like, hey, let's rent an RV for the first time, right? Right. They see the advantage of what we're doing. Like if we can help people easily get into campgrounds, it's a win-win. So we've got a partnership with RV Share to kind of help make it easy for these private parks. So do you have people who go out whenever you have a a private campground or or just you're breaking ground a new area? Do you like have people who go and say, yep, I'm available. I'll drive this campground for you. And you set them up with the rig and and whatnot. Or, Or are you heading out there yourself or is it a little mix of both? No, actually, I don't film as of about a year and a half ago. I don't film any parks anymore myself. We have currently, um, as of this recording, there are 18 different teams all across the country filming campgrounds. Um, And so people can just reach out to us if they're interested and we provide them information. And um, it's pretty simple. We pay them per campground to go film it. Um, It's it's a numbers game. The more campgrounds you film, the more you you make. So it works really well for folks that want to hit the road and go travel and visit a lot of campgrounds, one. Or two works well for full timers who travel quite a bit because they can, yeah. you know, pick up campgrounds as they're going along. And so, it's it's one of those things where our our first problem was proving the technology works, right? Proving that it's a real need, and we've done that. We've proven that sure. it's a need. We're filling it. It's a, it's a good tool. Our next problem now is is the reason nobody you know people sign up but they're like you don't have campgrounds in Timbuktu. Well, yeah, because we haven't gotten anybody there yet. So now we're working <laughs> on that content, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I mentioned we have 1,350 as of this recording. 
we actually have already filmed 2000 campgrounds. There's another 650 that our teams are currently working on to bring. Wow. Live. And so it looks very likely by the end of the summer that we'll probably be approaching nearly 3000 campgrounds with these. Virtual that is so teams. cool. That, that's kind of going to be a reach. We'll see how close we get to that. But with this many teams out there capturing as many videos as we are right now, it's highly likely that we get very close to that number. At that point, I believe we have a critical mass where <laughs> you're, you're probably going to find one of the two campgrounds that you're going to sure. will have a virtual tour of it. So I'm, I want you to clear something up really quick. Clint keeps saying app, but it looks like a website. Is it an app or a website? Yes. Or both. (laughs) Yay, both. both. We um, love both. As of this recording, literally just before I jumped on here, I was green lighting the app team to go ahead and submit to iOS in the Apple store. So this will be fully available as an app, like a, you know, dedicated app on your phone. But it works just seamlessly on a browser too, on your okay. phone or on a, on a tablet or anything else. So started out as a website. We are just now launching the native apps. Nice. Right Timely question. I, well, wow, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if anyone's listening and they're like, you know, I kind of want to do this. I want to help out. I want to get in contact and drive around with with a 360 camera and look like I'm a Google car or something like that. Is that possible to, to join your ranks? Yeah, absolutely. So um, go to campgroundviews.com. Um, there's a contact form down at the bottom of the page. Click that and just send us your information. Tell us what you want to do and we'll send you some more information. We've got, we've got, we don't have it public facing because we kind of want to control the flow into that. Sure. But we have an information page we'll send you with all the details and really dive into like, you know, it's not right for everybody. Sure. And we're very upfront with this. This works for certain people. It doesn't work for others. So we try to be very upfront with that. But when it works, it works magically. We've got a team that's down in Arizona that's captured 100 parks in the last three weeks. We've got another team down in Florida doing the same. So nice. like, if, if it works, it can really work well. And it also can be quite lucrative um, for the teams that are capturing it if they're doing it at volume. It can make a lot of financial sense too. That's well, cool. Sounds like a super fun job to have. That's for it's sure. Awesome. Sounds like a it's job awesome. Jackie you can How have. cool. Absolutely. Yeah, my sister lives yeah. in an RV and she travels around. There you go. So, I'll so tell you. she wants to make some extra you never money know. and go visit campgrounds. I mean, why not? Like it's, we, life's short, right? <laughs> if you're going to do something, have fun doing it. So we're trying to design it so that people can go out and enjoy it and have fun. I mean, you're going to visit a lot of cool places. So that's the whole purpose, right? It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. It's it's trying to make it easy to go camping. And so we're trying to make it fun to make that. Yeah. Happen. yeah. So you talked before about how the old way is like you go to Google and you see the reviews. There are some apps like that where it's all based on user reviews. Does your website have, can I leave a review for a campground or is it just... Yeah, you can absolutely pictures. you can leave reviews and you can post photos and all that type of stuff. Um, the, the the only difference being is that we try to be a little bit of a step ahead. So, like one of the things you'll see if you go out and you you check out all these apps is in, in your big red flag whenever you get to an app is when they say we have twenty three thousand campgrounds that you can stay at. There are eighteen thousand campgrounds that you can actually stay at in the entire United States. So if they say there's twenty three thousand, they're doubling up. <laughs> they're yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so that's a clear idea and indicator that the information that they're sharing with you is kind of yeah, a little bit, a little bit iffy. In the end, we want people to end up at a campground that they can stay at and enjoy, right? And and that last piece is key. Enjoy varies based upon your needs, right? So one place that's right for you might not be right for me, right? So we try to give you good information on that. And so, yeah, we love reviews. We love photos. Feel free to submit them. The only thing, just know that we check it. So like we watch out for bogus photos, bogus um, reviews. We want our data to be solid. And sure. so that's a big thing for us. You don't have to rely on the blurry photo that that one guy took as he was pulling out of the campsite. You have a professional doing it. I do like that. Well, and yes. hopefully you don't have to read rants about somebody's dog barking or something irrelevant, but maybe you do. I don't know. 
Um, well, that's the thing. That's what frustrated me the most about when, it was why we built this is that I realized that I was spending hours, literally hours, yes. not just re- reading that review, but you would go and you'd click on their profile and read all their other reviews. Right. And then re- like you were doing like, you're almost like a forensic detective right. trying to determine if this dude's legit or not, or, you know, if they're, they're, you know, what they're, <laughs> that's right. I was like, this is crazy. Let just show me and I'll be able to make a decision that way. Just show me the yeah. campsite. And I'll have to say when I look, I'm like, okay, here's the ones that are well known. But then there's Joe's RV park. It only has 12 spaces. And so maybe not. But but it may be magical. It might be the gem. Right. Yep. You just, man, it's it's scary when you have no information. That's like Foggy Bottom's <laughs> fishing hole. That's it, right. It's well reviewed. <laughs> <laughs> but but not one you would pick out of a lineup, right? No, the name, well, the main, yeah. And the big thing during COVID, you know, a lot of people wanted to really get away. So they started going out and doing dispersed camping. So they would, they found out, oh, I can go in the forest and camp anywhere for 14 days. The problem was the resource damage that occurred. So right. then you had like the entire forest shutting down dispersed camping. So in the end, you know, trying to give people good information that, that example of that 12 site park, that may be like just a total gem. Like right. maybe nobody's going there and you can back into the most amazing site and just have, have one of those times. And we had so many of those, those type of experiences when we were full-time RVing places that we, one site up in the Black Hills, we backed up to, they have the Mickelson trail, which is a multi-use. It used to be a railroad track and it's a multi-use trail now. And we backed up to one of the bridges that was there, the trestle bridge, Mm -hmm. and there was a creek running down it. And so our back window is open to this creek and this bridge. You know, that's one of those magical experiences that you're not really gonna find renting a hotel or Airbnb or something like that. So that's the cool thing about camping is staying in some of these special outdoor places. It is, it is. Magical moments are always exactly that magical. But what is your worst experience? Did you have a terrible campground where you walked in and said, all right, we have to find a better way. <laughs> New Jersey. Sorry, New Jersey, but it was in New Jersey. Oh, never say <laughs> sorry to New Jersey. Okay. I was born there. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> they they had this, te- it, and it wasn't, I don't know, the campground itself was a little bit different. Um, they set up a tent campers right next to our fifth wheel. And the tent campers, we knew that they were there. We didn't know that they, they checked in. We knew they were there because we started smelling the campfire smoke filling our, our RV. And so I walked out the door and I go around the corner of it and they put their fire pit right below our propane bottles. What? So what? they're right next to our fifth wheel with their fire, like no more than five feet away from what? our propane tanks. And I'm like, uh, hey, there's propane bottles right there. Can we like move this? And they were like, no. <laughs> so oh was, my God. That was the worst experience. That was where, you know, okay, let's put the slides in, pack up, move into a different spot because they're going to blow us up. You know, that was, that was probably one wow. of the, one of those That's weird wow. worst experiences, but that was, I mean, I've visited 5,000 campgrounds. That was like one experience. I mean, outside of insects getting eaten alive in the keys, when we got a bunch of no CMs that came in the trailer, yeah. that was an awful experience. So right. stuff like that, you know, stuff that you're going to get whenever you go on a journey can make your, yeah. make your adventure is no fun but overall you know when you consider the alternative i mean in the end we were full-time RVers for 12 years we lived in every single state in the lower 48 states for at least at least two weeks time we were in every one of those 48 states and in fact one time i fell asleep on an on an uh, airplane traveling across the country and it was night and I woke up about an hour into the flight and I just kind of had this crazy idea. I'm going to look out the window and see if I can identify where I'm at. And so I looked out the window and saw the grid lines and the cities below me. And I immediately knew that I was over Roswell, New Mexico. And I'm like, all right. And I turned on that GPS on the back of the screen. Right. We were over Roswell, New Mexico. So oh, wow. I had such an intimate knowledge just of the layout and grids of the roads and everything that I could identify it after falling asleep in a plane and looking down. That's so. a cool party trick. <laughs> <laughs> How many parties in airplanes do you go to? <laughs> he's, he's well, you know, my eight year old son, here's Atlas just if people want to, you want to really expand your families. And this is a popular thing for full time RVers. My son spent the first eight years of his life on the road living in an RV. He knows more about this country than any eight, well, he's 10 years old now, any 10 year old that you'll ever run into. And it always blows people away because he knows, he knows the keys. He knows Acadia. He knows Colorado. He, I mean, it's not that he just traveled to it for two days. He lived there. He did it. He went kayaking on this river. And so those type of adventures you can't have stationary. Those are the type of adventures you can have in an RV and traveling and camping. He's, he's American Mowgli. 
It's nice. Yeah. Is what's it? Yeah, the American Mowgli from the yes. Jungle Book. Yeah, I like it. So you uh, you mentioned uh, the dispersed camping and all that. There's still a big contingency of people out there who are backpacking and car camping and hitting the BLM land and all that. And they are, at first blush might not see this as an app this that is perfect for them, but I contend that some of those great trips, particularly if you're starting in Texas. And you have a long two day, three day slog just to get to your primary destination and then back. Your website is actually perfect for finding places on the way there and back to make sure that trip is not messed up by the going and the coming. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. And so for those folks, I mean, our website is completely free to use. You can use the search engine. The only time you need to become a member and, and pay is if you want to actually start using the virtual tours. That's where our, our paywall exists. So otherwise, use it. You can you can use it in search. You can find reviews and photos and in those old school YouTube videos I was mentioning. You'll find those of campgrounds. And if you, the campground does have a virtual tour, you can pay 10 bucks and view it real fast and make sure you know, that's cheap insurance to make sure you actually mm-hmm. stand in a place you actually like. Yeah. Um, our main focus, just to give insight for people who may be watching this now or in the future, is our focus is public parks right now. So state parks, county parks, city parks. So we're adding those as fast as possible. Great state of Texas. We have now got, uh, I think it's 85 or 90 parks in the queue right now that are being processed to bring live. So Excellent. we are adding so many places all across the country and just really trying to fill in that experience. So, you know, everybody camps different. Even if you have the same truck same trailer your camping experience is different from somebody sure. else um so we just want to fill that gap that's there and it's not it, we're not the right tool for everybody but if we are we'd love to have you join okay and speaking of joining you mentioned membership can you explain the membership fees and what it costs yeah so we have um our our cheapest plan is for a month at 10 bucks so 9.99 you join for a month and you can access all of the virtual tours that we have um, there's also then a, a one year membership and a five year membership. The one year I think is a hundred bucks or something like that. And then the five year is like 400 bucks or something like that. So it varies based upon the amount of time that you're going to be, um, uh, doing this. The only reason we have the five year plan is being very honest is there's people that come across this and they're like, Oh my God, this is amazing. How do I help? Well, we're making it easy. You, you join for the five years, you're, you're getting us $400 into our bank account that helps pay for more video production. So that's why we have that that yeah. bigger plan out there. Some people just get so excited about it, which is awesome because right. that's why we're doing it. And so they're just like, hey, how do I help? Here you go. You can join for the, the five-year plan. But for somebody who's planning a quick trip or whatnot, the $10 plan can work very well. You can go in, tour it. And the big question we get is, well, where do you have virtual tours right now? If you go to Campground Views, there's a link up at the top that says Campground Virtual tours. If you click that, it goes to a search result page that has currently 1,350 campgrounds on it. And you can actually see um, there's a state drop down. If you click the filters state drop down, you'll see where all the campgrounds are that we currently have. So you can see that you know, right now it's mainly the coast because that's where a lot of the recreation.gov properties are. Mm-hmm. But we're currently filling in the interior and adding state parks. So for example, we've already launched all the state parks in Washington, Oregon, Utah, Arizona. Um, and then we've got a vast majority of them in California, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Louisiana. Um, we're adding Tennessee, Florida. I mean, just Colorado, Montana, Idaho, right? So right. we're just adding these these locations as fast as possible. Well, just the state parks in Texas is huge. Yeah. Huge. So. Yeah. And they're huge state parks. Yeah. 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 Texas, Texas, and there's that. I don't Texas, know if you heard, but things parks. are pretty big down here. Yeah. <laughs> we are not one of our New videographers Jersey, that's down there. He, he messaged me. He's like, Hey, Mark, you've got this listed as one state park, but there's literally like six campgrounds and they're 50 miles away from each other. I'm like, yeah, we'll call that six state parks. Cause it's pretty big. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and that's yeah. how people will search for it. I would imagine. Right. You know? Yeah. When you're searching these campgrounds, is the location the only filter? No, you can actually do keyword search. So we tie, if you if you hit our homepage, um, we're actually tying into the Google Maps API. So you can search by address. You can search by like region or city. So that's like the main search. From there, then we have a keyword search. So there's a search bar up at the top, like a little search icon. If you click that, you can type beaches and it'll filter through and, and pull up all the campgrounds that have a beach of some kind. Nice. Um, and so we've got- Wow. We, our underlying me- metadata for our website has over a million records in it. So that's stuff like dogs and, you know, 
pools and showers and all sorts of these little details that you know might not be relevant for certain people but if you're looking for it it's very important so you can actually use the keyword tool to even filter down deeper into your search yeah. well, i bet one of those keywords is mosquitoes <laughs> i bet it's not <laughs> who looks for a camp that would be found in the reviews Clint? come on <laughs> you look for a campground that has reviews excuse me of too many mosquitoes Oh, yeah. That sounds like a lot of work. It's called a positive negative. <laughs> I, I would look for one with no snakes. See, that's how my brain works. Yeah. Yeah, a positive yeah. negative. <laughs> All right. Well, while we get confused over on our end, Mark, what's the future? Do you have new things you're planning in the future? I mean, where do you see yourself in a year, two years, three years? Are you going to add more features, more campgrounds? Yeah, the biggest thing is obviously the app release, which is coming up here, you know, probably in the next week or two, we'll be launching that. So that'll be a pretty big news for a lot of folks. From there, it's just a matter matter of adding on more campgrounds with the virtual tours and then adding on more user, you mentioned featured, right? For example, cell service, dump stations, adding those type yeah. of details on as people demand them, right? There's some really good apps out there for it. Do we need to replace those apps? Probably not, right? If there's other tools that are already ahead of us on that, you know, we'll, we'll try to fill in the gaps where we can really add the most value. And right now, the most value we can provide is with these virtual tours. So that's a big one for us is to add more and more. Um, you know, again, when you think about it, we, we bootstrapped this thing and launched with 143 and now we're at 1,350. We've added 300 parks. We're, well, here, we're adding 15 campground virtual tours daily. Right oh, now. that's, so that's, that's, that's amazing. Kind of yeah. That is awesome. Well, I'm ready to plan a trip, Clint. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Lindsay. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it, it, this is really a passion project for you. Um, so, so, so there's gotta be some encouragement for those who are just getting into this, the, the newbies out there. Do you got something for, for those folk? They're just getting into camping and RVing. So here's the thing you, if you're just getting into this, you've just discovered the best way to travel period. The trick is here's the trick in order to make it enjoyable slow down mm. you're not in a hurry this isn't a race chill out like biggest piece of message i can get to people jump into this once you've done that once you've slowed down then don't plan that 1000 mile epic drive plan a 300 mile journey and go have some fun yeah that's the trick to rving and camping is just slow down it's the same tip that i give to people who are afraid of backing up you know what the trick to backing up a trailer is slow slow down if you go slow and you screw up a little bit, well, you correct it really easily. So the, I guess that's the biggest message for RVing is just slow down and you'll have a I lot love of fun. that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mark, this has been an absolute pleasure in, in spite of probably my technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> we got through it. So, so very good. Well, um, is it okay with you off? I extend the invite for him to come in and video some parks down here and and hang yes. out with us. Yes. Come hang out with us, Mark. He doesn't video awesome. anymore. Yeah, but he 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 might just for old time's sake come down here to <laughs> no, I don't think Texas. he would, but I bet it'd be really fun to visit in person. So if there's ever an option, you let us know. I will, absolutely. That sounds great. All right, very good. Well, let's go ahead and let Mark go. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of the RV Small Talk Podcast. And uh and do go check out campgroundviews.com or probably by the time I get this thing uh, released, edited and released, it's probably an app, app for your phone as well. There's an app for that. There's an app for that. Click it. So check that out. Um, I've been bumping around on the YouTube channel with all the old videos and some of his more recent stuff as well. Um, it's totally worth it. I'm going to be showing this to, to my wife as we're planning. Actually, I'm going somewhere this weekend, so we're probably going to use it starting tonight. So <laughs> I digress. Thank you again, Mark, for joining us. Everyone else, you need to check this out. Get after it. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.